Crossroads Media. This is the exact reason. The exact reason that all the callers that this entire season, last season, have been calling and complaining about Aaron Nola. Why? He's been backing him up. This is the exact reason. He does not know how to respond after his team put some electricity in the fucking building. False. He didn't in this particular game. I don't want to do this. I'm all for getting things off your chest. But what we can't do is act as if Aaron Nola can't pitch well and every every time that the Phillies score runs, he just becomes a, a, a terrible pitch. It's just not true. I just sort of ran through it. On Wednesday, June 5th, he pitched against Milwaukee. They won a game where he went seven and gave up zero. Like, here's the thing. Let's pretend, and you're wrong, but let's just pretend for discussion's sake that that is true. You're wrong, but let's say it is true. Where every time the Phillies score runs, he automatically gives it right back up, and he is a problem. Well, what you're not doing then is giving him credit for the games that aren't even competitive because of how much of a star he is. Outside of his first start of the year in Atlanta, I mean, it's pretty absurd. Win, 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 loss, win, 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 and then a loss today. I'm sorry. (laughs) It's impossible for him to be as bad as what you're portraying with me running off his numbers here. It's just literally impossible. And I'm prepared for probably a lot of these calls today. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I haven't heard outside of one individual, right? There's one guy who was labeled the Aaron Ola hater who, credit to him, he's sort of actually creating a personality because the amount of tweets... The amount of people in the Discord, the amount of direct messages that said, oh, God, the last thing I want to hear today is the Aaron Nola hater. He created, I guess, a little personality for himself, so God bless him. But outside of that one person, it's been awfully quiet. And even for him, it's been awfully quiet. It's ironic how the second something goes down that we haven't ever seen really in the Aaron Nola experience to this level, I think I saw a statement during the broadcast or maybe it was online that the last time we've ever seen anything like this was over two seasons ago for Aaron. That's a long time ago. Yes, he is a great pitcher 85% of the time. But every time that we need a shutdown, he never shows up. Not true. And wow, 85% of the time? Imagine being angry that your starter who is a stud at the top end of your rotation, is filthy for 85% of the time if that number isn't even higher. It's wrong to say he's never there when the team needs him. When his last start, he gave up zero and they won a game where they scored two runs. Or when he pitches and the team only scores four runs and they win a game 4-2 and he pitches deep into the action. It's not always this world where the Phillies are down big, the Phillies fight back, and then the next inning we need a shutdown inning and he can't. Yeah, that was a problem today, but there are so many other scenarios where Aaron Nola comes up so large that might be different Maybe it's when the offense is quiet and not particularly red hot and not scoring a bunch of runs, but he keeps you in a position to win by giving up a goose egg. He's not perfect. 85% of the time, if that number that you just threw out of your ass is correct, that doesn't make you happy? Okay. All right. Let's take the next call. You know, 
every time this team, this offense fights back, puts a little runs on the board for Aaron Nola, what does he do that bottom half of the inning? Oh, my God, we're doing this again. Oh, literally the same thing. I don't get it. It was bad today. Today it was bad. Why do we always have to go to every time? It's not every time today. And guess what? There's going to be another game where this happens too. It is because that's what occurs in this sport. But it's not every time. He's won his last five games. And he was a big part of it. It wasn't well. He allowed nine earned runs, but the Phillies scored 11. No. Quality start after quality start after quality start after punch out after punch out after punch out. Dominant efforts. Great efforts. Really strong efforts. Consecutively. He has a stinker. It's not every time. It's actually the complete opposite. Look, if it was every time, I'd be right there with you. They are going to lose baseball games, right? When, when you say, ah, oh, well, remember that loss a few months back? And you have to choose the one a few months back because all they've been doing is winning at an epic rate for quite some time. So if this team's going to win 110 games, and I don't know if they're going to win 110. They're going to win over 100. I don't know if they're going to win 110. But let's say they win 100. They're losing 62 games. So 62 times, not every one of those losses is going to be a poor offensive day. They'll probably lose a game once in a while where they score six runs or seven runs so you won't put it on the offense. But in that 62-game window, let's pretend 35 of them, 40 of them, the offense scores one run, scores two runs, scores three runs, and you're not happy with the consistency on that night. They leave runners in scoring position. They are going to lose games. So when you point out, remember that one loss? Well, if they win the series, if they win two out of three and one of the losses happen to come against a Miami or happens to come against a team that's not very good, but you won two of the three or three of the four or something along those lines, I I don't think we have the right mentality to rip them apart here. And they are also, one, not fully alive right right now. Excuse me, I'm starting to get hiccups because I just had that water ice. But this isn't the team that I project to watch when it's the playoffs. Do you think Bryson Stott's going to be batting cleanup and Mundo Sosa's going to be batting fifth, David Dahl batting sixth, sixth, Whit Merrifield seventh, Stubbs eighth, and Rojas ninth? That is more than half of your lineup that won't be relevant. I, I mean, Sosa should be your bench bat coming off the bench. Whit Merrifield, Garrett Stubbs, they should not be active. Dahl not active. Maybe Rojas batting ninth. But five, six, seven, eight guys in your lineup. To, oh, sorry, eight guys. Four guys of your nine. So half of your lineup shouldn't be relevant when the games are actually super important. And I'm not mad at the offense for being the reason today. And you can't crush Kyle as he hits a bases clearing double and knocks in all your runs. I don't know. I think we are losing our minds. I think we are having a difficult time understanding what being a good baseball team is like. And also, just context on where they are currently with all of these injuries. Right? I mean, it's true. And this team is different than other teams for the Phillies franchise with this core. Uh, Meaning... There was once a time where this team was built and only built to win games by hitting a a bunch and hitting a lot of home runs and scoring a ton. We called it the softball lineup. That's no longer the case. So while I do want my offense to get going, and I do want them to rally and whatnot, but I think a healthy JT and Boehm getting back on track and everyone sort of getting into their solidified role, it will organically be created once again. They're just not there. I just gave you half the lineup that are role players, right? It's it's what it is. 
Their starters are serious. Their bullpen is serious. Their defense is so different than when the team was just big boppers and poor D. Kyle Schwarber left field, Reese Hoskins first base, Alec Bohm who couldn't play a lick at third base. This is what your defense was, and you had to make up for all of those errors by smashing a billion homers. You can sweep a series against a division leader in Milwaukee by only scoring seven runs because you play excellent defense and you have really good starting pitching. That's real. It's not just fluky. It's not random. It's not just happenstance. It's actually a part of this team's winning, and it's a part of their culture. Now, you don't get it every single day because they play every single day, but you get it at, I don't know, let's just throw the number out that someone else mentioned previously and say 85%. Well, if you get that 85% of the time, guess what? You're winning over 100 games, and you are a scary team. All right? All right, let's take another one. What's happening, Broods? It's about about the seventh inning right now. I don't see these guys, um, unless something miraculous happens, getting back into this fight, but I'm putting everything into context. Aaron Nola hasn't pitched in a few days. He's probably out of whack. I understand being frustrated that he didn't get that strike, but I mean, there's no reason to melt down, but it's the, it, it's nothing to, I'm not freaking out over it. Um, I mean, we got what? Marsh is out. I know he has his rehab, but Marsh is out. Turner's out. Um, our, our catcher is out. I don't know why I can't think of the name. Maybe it's just because I'm just, I'm just kind of mind blown right now with how bad we're pitching. But JT, look, it's another day. It'll be another day once we get things through. So hey, look, wrap this little clean, flush it out, go to Baltimore, try to get things back in order again. I know they're a tight team, but we'll make it happen. So go Phils. Bravo. Bravo. 